Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you like what you see, please subscribe and give this video a thumbs up as new videos come out weekly. Today, we're going to talk about strategies on navigating the CPA handbook during an exam. I'll do a demo of the strategy that I use, and then I'll also provide some practice slides for you as well. So the overview for today is that we're going to go through what resources are given to you during the exam, what are the sections in the accounting handbook, what strategies are there for navigating the handbook during exams, and my personal tips on how to navigate it. So if you didn't know, the CPA exams are essentially an open book exam. You'll have the Income Tax Act, the Accounting Handbook, and the Assurance Handbook. However, for anyone that has taken the exam or tried practicing for the exam, you'll know that reading through these material during the exam is a sure way to fail. So the trick here is, you want to know specifically what section in the Tax Act or Handbook you want to look up, and then go to that section as quick as possible, figure out what you need, and then go back to writing your case. So the following video is going to be explaining how to navigate the Accounting Handbook. Sorry for anyone that's here thinking that they'll learn how to navigate the Income Tax Act or the Assurance Handbook. That will be a video for another day. If you already know how to navigate these, let me know in the comments below, because those things are a beast, and even I want to know how to navigate them, especially the Tax Act. So if anyone's currently enrolled in the CPA program, they'll have access to NOSHA, and within that, you'll have access to the Exam Reference Accounting Handbook. So now let's talk about what sections are provided within the Accounting Handbook. There's Part 1, which is IFRS related, there's Part 2, which is ASPE related, and there's Part 3, which is non-for-profit related. So depending on the case that you're going to be doing, you'll be opening one of these three to help you figure out the technical that you need. So now let's actually talk about strategies on navigating the accounting handbook during exams. So from what I know, there's actually four strategies on how to actually navigate the handbook during your exams. The first is you don't actually use it. I know one of my friends that just memorized all the criteria and never even flipped open the handbook at all during their exam. Was it useful? I don't know. They passed. So that's the first way. The second way is that you can actually read the section until you find what you need. This one is not recommended. If you need to read a lot of the section for you to understand what's going on, this is probably not going to help you during the exam because you'll probably run out of time. However, having said that, I had a case where I had to talk about what is pension accounting and I had no clue during the exam. So what I did was I flipped open the accounting handbook, I found the section on pension, and I tried to read as much as I can within the time limit that I gave myself for that section, and then just brought whatever I knew onto the exam and just continued. The third strategy is to try to search for unique keywords. So what you want to do is look at the sections where you want to remember or you want to flip to during the exam, and figure out if there's any keywords and try to figure out how to search for those and practice a little bit in Notion before you actually get to your exam so that it actually helps you. Later on in the video, I'll show you guys how to refine your searches to get better results. However, having said that, I don't actually think the search function is that useful in the handbook. They really need to learn a thing or two from Google. So the last strategy is just practice beforehand. Look up all the sections you don't know, figure out where they are, and be familiar with them so that during the exam, you can actually flip to them pretty quickly. Let me know in the comments below which strategy would you use, and if there's any other strategy you might recommend in navigating the handbook. And to be honest, there's no one best strategy. The best strategy is the one that works for you. So now here's a question for you. Which strategy do you think I used during my exam? So if you guessed the fourth strategy, you're right. We're talking about practice. For anyone who knows basketball might know that reference, but for anyone that doesn't, it's okay. So now let's continue with how to apply the fourth strategy of practicing beforehand. So the first step is to make a list of all the technical areas that use criteria. This can be leases, discontinued operations, or contingent losses. The next step is to see how you can shorten that list by determining which ones you can actually memorize versus which one are you going to rely on the handbook for. Once you have a shortened list, you will go into the handbook and jot down what section they're in and what paragraph number they are. The next step is to memorize the section and paragraph for the topics you want to remember. For example, IFRS lease or criteria. I would memorize IFRS 16, paragraph 63. Or in other words, IFRS 16, 63. Then we get into the most important step, which is that you have to practice, practice, practice. And what that means is that you have to test yourself 
on which section and paragraph each of the words you wrote down are in, and then time yourself on how fast you can click and scroll within the handbook to copy and paste them into a Word document. I'll run you through an example of how I practice on the next slide. But what I want people to understand from the strategy is that you'll never be good at navigating the handbook if it's your first time looking at it during the exam, or if you haven't practiced beforehand. The analogy I can give you is that probably everyone is good at their ABCs. But if I give you a word and ask you to find it in the dictionary, you probably would still take some time to flip through the pages to figure out which one it's on. So it's the same for the handbook. Without practicing ahead of time, there's no way to look up things faster because the search function just isn't that good. So now let's go through an example. I would first write down the accounting topics I want to look up for, and then I would quiz myself on the section and paragraph. So for leases, I know it's in section 3065, paragraph 6. And for discontinued operation, they're in IFRS 5, paragraphs 31 and 32. Then I'd go into the accounting handbook. I would open up part 2, accounting standards, section 3000, find leases, then scroll down until I reach paragraph 6. Then I'll copy and paste and put it in my Word document. Now for discontinued operations. I'd go into part 1 for IFRS, and then I'd go down to IFRS 5, go down to the section 31 and 32, and then I would copy that and put that into my Word document as well. So if I was actually practicing, I'd probably go a lot quicker and would have about five criteria to practice with each time. In addition, I would set a timer to see if I'm getting quicker every time I do it. So here are the top 20 criteria that I memorized, where they are in the handbook. You will probably come up with a different list than me, depending on what criteria you were or were not able to memorize without using the handbook. So now let's play a game. On the next few slides, I wrote one of the previous criteria I mentioned, and you will have seven seconds to name the section and paragraph that they are in before the slide changes. For example, if you see lease or IFRS, you will have to say IFRS 16, paragraph 63. I've made a lot of slides, so I don't expect someone to go through all of them in one sitting, but you can always come back and go to a random part of this video and then test yourself on a couple of the slides each time. If you don't want to play this game, feel free to skip to the next section where I give my final tips on how to navigate the handbook.
So to end off, I want to leave you with two final tips. And that is, in the handbook, there are three good tree diagrams that can help you during your exams. The first two relate to contributions for nonprofits. Using the deferred method and the restricted fund method. As you probably don't spend much time studying on non-for-profits, it's a good idea to know where this is within your handbook so that if you get a question on it, you can look it up during the exam. To find this, type in the search bar 441 with quotation marks around it. It is not going to be the first result, but it should be close enough to the top so that it's easy to find. Once you have found it, click into it and then scroll all the way to the bottom and then you should be able to find these two tree diagrams. As for the other tree diagram that I found useful, it's for related party transactions. Again, you would type in 3840 in quotation marks within the search bar, and then you would scroll a little until you found that section, click into it, and then you will look for paragraph 64. Again, I just want to remind you to use the quotation marks when typing anything into the search bar because it helps you refine your searches. Thanks again for watching. Please subscribe if you like what you saw and give this video a thumbs up as I try to make new videos weekly. I hope I didn't disappoint with providing strategies on how to navigate the handbook. Let me know in the comments below which strategies you use and what other ones you might have in mind. If you have any other questions or comments, feel free to let me know below. I'll do my best to reply back.